lovelies and welcome to inside number 23 my podcast which is all about knitting and sewing and generally living the most crafty life possible my name is katie hello and i am joining you as always from um, hertfordshire which is just north of london in the uk where i live with my husband emrys and our lovely pug puppy roly you can find me on all of the various social medias as miss lavelli i am most active on um instagram followed by ravelry but i'm also on on Periscope and fingers crossed um, I'll do a little bit more periscoping in the near future and we also have a Ravelry group for the podcast which you can find um, if you go into the groups tab on Ravelry and just search inside number 23 which is where you can get involved in all of our ongoing knit-alongs and just have a lovely chat with some really really lovely people. I want to say a huge huge welcome back to all of my long-term viewers hello guys I've missed you and a big big welcome to all of my new viewers who have um, joined me recently thank you so much to subscribing to the channel and if this is your first ever time with us then um, thank you for spending a little bit of crafty time with me it's been a week this week um, on a very kind of serious note it has been a real week um, I was considering whether or not to podcast this week I wasn't sure whether I was in the right frame of mind, in the right mood to sit down with you guys, but I realised that at this kind of time I really wanted to do something that made me happy and one of the things that brings me the most joy and the most happiness is talking with you guys every week and therefore I just had to put a podcast out. I am feeling distinctly in the need for comfort, hence my slightly relaxed um, look. I am wearing my Hufflepuff jumper, which I purchased um, on holiday, and I am just in the mood to share some, some feel-good stuff with you this week. Um, there's been a lot of stuff going on um, in the political world over the last week. It was centred around the US election, but I do believe it has been felt worldwide. Definitely here in the UK, it's been felt quite a lot. Um, I'm not going to talk in detail about it, um, as the majority of other podcasters who are putting out things this week have been saying. I want this podcast to just be a little piece of the internet where you can go for a little bit of respite, a little bit of knitting based goodness and to be perfectly honest the thing that's got I think a lot of people through the last week is how incredible the knitting community is, how much love there is there, how much support there is for everybody and it's just been a real a real uplifting thing for a lot of people, I know, myself included. So thank you guys for being wonderful, thank you for coming to spend some time with me, and I hope that we can enjoy this. I think it's going to be maybe slightly more brief than it usually is podcast, but we are going to focus on knitting and the lovely people in our wonderful community and yeah let's get on with it shall we before we start i do want to give a kind of little disclaimer that i feel that i don't have a huge amount of actual crafting to share with you this week i feel that this week life has kind of impacted art which has impacted life and been going in this weird cycle of not really being sure what i want to work on what i want to do i have a lot of plans but when i've been starting projects I've been getting quite frustrated so in terms of what I've actually been doing there's not a huge amount to share with you but I do have um, lots of other fun content and I was a little bit again thinking oh maybe I shouldn't podcast because I don't have loads of projects to share but I know I don't watch podcasts just to see the products it's to share it's to spend some time with the people so hopefully you will forgive me and I will have a lot more fun stuff to share with you this week this time next week. <laughs> so I'm going to start off this week with Owl Post. My little owly friends have been particularly busy over the last couple of weeks and I have received some truly truly wonderful parcels in the post from friends of the podcast so thank you to all of the lovely people who have been sending me some little parcels of joy. I think the owls are getting quite tired with the amount of gorgeous things that have been coming through. 
The first person I wanted to say a big thank you and hello to is lovely Ramona and um, although we've never met I feel I kind of know you because Eric talks about you a great deal. Eric of Sticks Plus Twine who is a dear friend of mine, um, his friend Ramona actually reached out and sent me the most beautiful little kind of care package which was waiting for me when I got home from holiday in that was a lovely selection of um, Canadian goodies. There was a couple of bits of tea from David's Tea, which I am so excited to use, so excited. And also some, some little treats, including something that I have never had before, which is Coffee Crisp. And I've heard quite a lot of other podcasts talk about Coffee Crisp, and oh my goodness, they did not last very long. They they were devoured very very quickly, <laughs> um, and yeah they are they are now they're gone because I ate them and they were amazing so thank you. But the real um, piece de resistance of said parcel was a couple of t-shirts that Ramona um, actually <laughs> sent uh, both myself and Emrys. Now Emrys's t-shirt, um, we've been both been wearing them, but Emrys's is currently in the wash, so I can't share that one with you. But I'm going to show you mine, and it is, da, 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 it's Harley Quinn, but it is the pop t-shirt, so it's the pop version of Harley Quinn. So for those of you who have been watching for a little while, you'll know that I have recently developed quite a large obsession obsession with pop figures, and this is Harley Quinn on a t-shirt. I love this so much, it's amazing. Emrys's is basically matching, but it is the Joker, and we've both been wearing them, and they are wonderful, so thank you so much. Such a thoughtful thing to send, and it was a really lovely thing to have waiting for me when I got back from holiday, so thank you so much Ramona, you are amazing. The next parcel that I received was completely unexpected. It was actually a little package from Michelle. And Michelle has actually sent me um, a parcel previously. Uh, she has a business called Love by Little Map and she makes stitch markers and progress keepers and really gorgeous stuff like that. She's based I believe in Singapore and I was just totally not expecting to get a parcel from her but she sent me this lovely little pair of socks which has some gorgeous little French bulldogs on it, absolutely adorable. Um, it looks like that would be a really cute girlfriend for Rolly, my pug in case you don't know who Rolly is. But the really special part of the um, package was actually a selection of Christmassy progress keepers which she sent to me which includes, and I don't know if you can see this, but that is a golden Moomin progress keeper and I nearly died when I saw it. There's also a little Christmas tree and a tiny crochet flower and I love them, they are beautiful. Thank you so much, Michelle. Do check out her Etsy shop, which is Love by Little Map. I will put the link in the bar down below. And also all of my show notes can be found at my Ravelry group, my Inside Number 23 Ravelry group, so you can check them out there. But thank you, Michelle, for just making such incredible things and making me very, very happy to receive them. So thank you very, very much. I received one more package this week and this is from a very special lady indeed. It was from Tracy, who also has her own business. She has an indie yarn dyeing business um, called Nora George, which if you are based in the UK, um, you may have heard of because she is gaining popularity daily. She is an incredible dyer and um, I have been a fan of her work for a very long time. The first ever purchase that I made from the Nora George yarn shop was a selection of Harry Potter mini skeins. So you can gather Tracy dyes a lot of Harry Potter themed yarn, but that's always gonna work for me. <laughs> I love anything Harry Potter themed, but Tracy's colorways are just very, very special. Um, everything she does is wonderful and I'm a huge fan of hers and she got in touch saying that she would like to um, to send me something which is so lovely of you Tracy, you know that I am absolutely thrilled that you thought of me and um, I was able to actually pick a skein of yarn that I um, I was after and I thought about getting one of her Harry Potter skeins, I'm not gonna lie, I was um, very much considering getting some Harry Potter yarn, but 
Um, looking through her more recent Instagram pictures, and you should really check her out on Instagram because she is amazing. I spotted a colorway that just made my heart happy, and that is this one. This is called Toffee Apple, and it's very subtle. It may not be kind of picked up properly on the camera, but it's this very kind of natural base with these little speckles of oranges, almost peachy colours and greens. And this is a sock set, so it comes with this gorgeous green colour to um, kind of complement it. So there you can really see some of the speckles coming through. It is beautiful. I absolutely love this, Tracy. It is so beautiful. And this is a um, Superwash um, Merino Nylon Blend. It's just gorgeous. This is her label, which is just the sweetest thing as well. Nora George, it's beautiful. I I couldn't be happier. I'm so happy to have this skein to add add to my collection. It's gonna be very, very happy living with my other indie dyed yarns. But on top of the yarn that she sent me, Tracy also sent a selection of other little goodies for me including a Nora George tote bag, which has these incredible neon colours on it. And there is her label at the bottom. I I love this. I can't wait to um, pick the right project to live in this. It's beautiful. Um, she also sent some, some sweets and some goodies and I just feel so lucky. But guys, um, apologies for the crinkling. She also sent a selection of goodies for you guys as well. And in here is um, another sock set uh, of yarn, which has been dyed specifically for you guys. And it's in the Let's Go Foraging color. There's a tote bag in there, a stitch counter, this incredible um, kind of gauge ruler that's in there. I am not entirely sure what I'm gonna be using this for right away because I want it to be for something special because this is a very special, lovely little kit of, of goodies here. So I'm gonna be hanging on to it for a while, but Tracy, thank you so much. You are so generous, you are so talented. I think you're wonderful and I can't wait for you to be near London soon, fingers crossed, so that we can meet up and have a lovely coffee and a chat. It's gonna be amazing and um, just thank you for being you, and I i just know you're gonna go from strength to strength. You're amazing, thank you so much. I'm gonna move on now to my knitting segment, which is, of course, what's on my needles? And as I hinted um, to at the beginning of the episode, I don't have a huge amount to share with you. Um, I was feeling very artistically frustrated during this week for various reasons. <laughs> come to whatever conclusion you might um, from that. I do have some really beautiful sweater projects and cardigan projects on the needles at the moment, but my brain was just not in the right frame of mind to be able to cope with either of those. I also started and completed one of the I Love You More Than Pumpkin Spice socks last week, and I thought about casting on the second sock, but again, working with a charted pattern was just which is not gonna work um, for me. I just felt that I needed something very simple, very mindless, but very satisfying to take my mind off a lot of things and to be able to pour all of my excess energy, shall we say, into without getting frustrated if something were to go wrong. And so I did something really quite out of character for me if you've been watching my podcast for a little while because you may or may not know that I started knitting socks last year. This kind of time last year was the first time I started knitting a pair of socks and I knitted a lot of different socks, all kinds of different socks and then I just I just fell completely out of love with the whole process. All I wanted to do was knit on garments and I couldn't even think about looking at a pair of socks guess what happened this week? <laughs> I cast on a pair of socks. And guys, I didn't just cast on a pair of socks. I have a hoe. <laughs> 
This is probably quite reminiscent of last week when I also had a ho, which was for I Love You More Than Pumpkin Spice by Cece Allman. And um, apologies, Cece, because I keep putting a D at the end of your name, but it's Allman, Cece Allman. Beautiful pattern. And um, now I have another ho, but it's for a different <laughs> pair of socks. So I am probably going to be suffering from um, second sock syndrome by the looks of it, but this is exactly what I needed. This is a vanilla sock, so completely just boring, stockingette stitch the whole way, nothing complicated, nothing um, to overthink, and this sock genuinely was my therapy for the last week. It helped me get out all of my frustrations and put my energy into something constructive, and that is what this is. One thing I would like to say, the yarn that I've used is by No Makers. This was a gift that was given to me, which I've had caked up for really quite a long time, and it is in the um, Bertie Botts colourway, and it's on the Sparkle Gnome base, so it's a Stellina base. Um, it's Merino, Superwash Merino, Nylon, and Stellina, and I love this. It is incredible. The Stellina is gold Stellina as well, which is just so special. I am so happy with how this sock has turned out. It is just everything that I would ever want. I spoke last week about the fact that I had been wearing some of my knit socks um, and I was finding them a little bit big. I was struggling with the size of them, they felt really really baggy when I was wearing them and the more I wore them the more they stretched and so I decided with these socks to do something drastic and change from a larger stitch count to quite a considerably smaller stitch count. When I first started knitting socks I automatically went for 64 stitches. I realised relatively quickly that that would be too large for me with certain yarns in terms of what would fit my foot, so I changed down to 60 stitches and that has worked quite well with a lot of different yarns but still during wear when they get stretched out they do feel a lot bigger. This sock is 56 stitches on 2.25 millimeter needles and I think we may have a winner in terms of how I'm going to be knitting my vanilla socks from now onwards. This just fits so well and it's a little tight, I wouldn't say tight, just well fitted around my foot but I know that with a couple of wears it's going to be utterly dreamy and I love this. In terms of the construction as well, I've always been a cuff down knitter when it comes to socks, but with this sock, I used exactly the same construction that I used for the I Love You More Than Pumpkin Spice socks, because the fit that I got from that was so preferable to anything that I've ever had from another pair of socks, and it, it was absolutely dreamy. I think I may be a toe up sock knitter convert. I don't want to say anything too much too soon because um, things could seriously change, let's be honest. <laughs> it always does with sock knitting, but I think 56 stitches toe up with a one by one twisted rib. This is my rib of choice and it, it pretty much always has been since I started knitting socks. May be my new go-to sock. Um, so this is what I have been spending the majority of my time working on and I love it. I think this yarn is beautiful. I must admit, the longer I saw it sitting in the cake, I was going through phases of thinking, I don't necessarily think that that colourway will work for me, and then being totally in love with it again, and I'm just thrilled with how it knits up. I think it's perfect for this time of year. It reminds me of kind of bonfire night and fireworks, and of course, it's the Bertie Botts colourway, so it's Harry Potter themed, which makes me happy on very many levels. But in terms of... Um, second sock syndrome for this particular sock. I have been very very good and I have actually already cast on the second sock and here it is. Isn't it great? I'm working on like I said 2.25 millimeter needles. These are some Knit Pro Symphonies. Look at my little progress keeper. Isn't he the cutest? He's a little bookworm. I love him so much. He's adorable on his little book. He makes me very happy when I'm knitting away and I have knit a lot more on this sock than I have. The Knit More Girls have a segment in their podcast which is called When Knitting Attacks, where they talk about things that have gone wrong in their knitting over the last week. And um, I love listening to it because 
it makes me feel better about when things go wrong with my knitting because they're such prolific knitters, both of the ladies of the Knit More Girls. And so when they do something wrong, even something relatively simple goes wrong, I think it's not just me that makes silly mistakes. But I must admit, <laughs> When I say that I found this week frustrating and I feel that life has impacted my art, I cast on the second sock, I knitted all the way up to the heel, I started putting the heel in and then I realised that instead of casting on 56 stitches I had only cast on 52 and like I said the 56 stitch sock already feels a little tight on my foot there was no way that I was going to be able to cope with 52 stitches so I had to rip back the entire thing down to the toe again and I pretty much just ripped back, picked up the stitches for the toe and um, cast on some more so increased the toe a little bit more and then started doing my my knitting again just round and round and round and round which I found so satisfying. I honestly think vanilla socks are going to be my go-to for the next at least the next couple of weeks if not the next several months. All I can think about is knitting vanilla socks and I know that may be boring for you guys but I'm sorry that's what I'm feeling right now and I hope that by putting my energy into vanilla socks it'll bring back some of my sweater mojo. My, my mood just changes so much at the moment. It was all sweaters, 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 and now it's all socks, socks, socks. It was disappointing that I had to undo so many hours work, but I want them to be right, and I don't want them to feel rushed, and I don't want them to feel impacted by the slightly negative moods that I've had over the past week. I did attempt to cast on another pair of socks this week as well. I've pretty much become the sock monster, I feel. Um, it's been nothing but socks on the brain. But again, this has a slightly when knitting attacks feel to it. I was heavily influenced for this next pair of socks that I cast on um, by lovely Casey of Creative Musings, which is a relatively new podcast, um, which you've probably heard of because lots of people have been talking about her because she's wonderful. But the funny thing is, is that Casey and I have kind of known each other, known each other, <laughs> through the interwebs for quite some time because both of us used to have sewing-based blogs on the internet and I, we kind of chatted a little bit and, um, I loved her blog, I think she's incredible, she's such a wonderful creative person. I really love that she has a podcast now because it means that I can kind of catch up with her on a regular basis as I used to do when she was regularly posting on her blog. So yay! It's really nice to be able to spend some time with you again Casey. And um, she showed on her most recent episode that she um, has been working on some socks for the Socks in Space Cal which is being hosted by um, lovely, lovely Candice of Pin Feathers and Pearls and I believe another podcast as well but I've forgotten which one it is, I'm so sorry. Um, but basically the idea is to knit a pair of socks that are space themed and Casey cast on this pattern which was called the Mercury Socks and I saw this pattern and I thought they are amazing and obviously I've been back on the sock knitting kick because I started my vanilla socks and I want to cast on my other I love you more than pumpkin spice socks I just want all the socks this month November is going to be sock vember basically and I really 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 wanted to try out this pattern um even more so because I saw the other day that Kristen of um Voon and Vine Yarns and the Yarngasm podcast hi Kristen um also is casting on these socks um they're a free pattern on Ravelry by the way so get involved guys I love a good free pattern on Ravelry they're such a lovely look to them these socks I can't even tell you they're gorgeous so I really just wanted to, to cast on a pair of these socks very, very badly and it made me go, right, you have a lot of projects on the needles. You have three sweaters and cardigans on the needles. You have lots of languishing whips, actually four sweaters and cardigans, oh my goodness, I've even lost count of them. But yes, lots of languishing whips, lots of orphan socks. The only way that I am going to allow myself to cast on a pair of socks is if I go back and frog some things. And that's what I did. I frogged back every pair of socks that I had on the needles, um, other than the uh, the Bertie Botts 
socks that I've been knitting. So that's currently the only sock that I have on the needles that's in progress, plus this one. Now this is some yarn that I frogged because I've had the sock on the needles for a very long time and I honestly couldn't see myself finishing them. And the yarn is this beautiful cake. It's gorgeous. It's by a homespun house. It's from the Harry Potter Yarn Club, the first Harry Potter Yarn Club that she did. And this is um, Xenophilius Explains the Deathly Hallows. That's the name of this colorway. It is gorgeous. I love it. Um, but I just wasn't feeling it in the socks that I am. Um, I had cast on with it unfortunately so I frogged those back and I thought I will use this yarn to cast on the mercury socks. Now the mercury socks are a beautiful lace panelled, lace patterned rather sock and the problem that I'm having is that I don't think that this yarn shows up a lace pattern well. I think it's why I struggled with it in the previous pattern that I was using which was again a relatively intricate patterned sock. It just wasn't showing up the detail of the knitting that I was doing which I found incredibly frustrating because when you put in a lot of time on a pair of socks you want to be able to see the pattern that you're creating. So if I can show you what I've cast on, here's my tiny little cast on of a sock. And as you can see this yarn is beautiful, it has speckles and gorgeousness but this is the rib section and I've done two repeats of the lace panel and you just can't see what's going on at all. The yarn is too busy. You can't see what's going on and it frustrates me so much. It's another, it's another knitting attacks. I wanted to keep it on the needles. I was so frustrated with it this morning. I can't even tell you because I'd started doing the lace and I was so excited to do the lace of the Mercury sock because it looks beautiful and nope just not working, not working for me at all. So this, this little guy is gonna get frogged again. And I'm going to try casting on with something a lot plainer to show up the lace. I'm very tempted to cake up my, um, my toffee apple set from um, Nora George because it does have speckling, but the speckling is so subtle that I think that this will really, really show up a nice lace pattern, so much better than something that's quite heavily coloured, um, like this yarn. Much as I love it, I've yet to find the perfect project that it works for. I've tried it with a couple of different things now and nothing has stuck. So I'm thinking it's time to frog back again. I may even reskein the yarn because it's been living in this cake for quite a long time and I do get worried about things living in cakes indefinitely, she says, with several more cakes of yarn sitting behind her on her storage. But yeah, I love the pattern, love the yarn, just not a fan of them together. But that's very much where my mind is right now. If it's not making me happy, there's no point. If it's not making you happy right now, it's not gonna make you happy later and you don't wanna waste all that time and that energy on something that isn't bringing you copious amounts of joy. At least that's how I feel. So watch this space. I'm hoping that there will be several more sock projects coming in the near future because like I said, they are amazing and bringing me huge amounts of happiness but it could just be indefinite amounts of vanilla socks. Who knows, I have a lot of sock yarn, as you can see um, behind me here. I have some beautiful sock yarn, and I do wanna have some more festive socks, some socks ready for Christmas. So I think there may be lots of vanilla socks, lots of beautiful self-striping and other, other good things coming in the near future. Moving on to my next segment, which is stash enhancements. And I have been a little bit naughty this week. I did kind of indulge in some, some goodies, both knitting and sewing related. And I'm gonna start off with a little purchase that I made um, yarn-wise from the incredible John Arben. I'm a big, big fan of John Arben and um, all of the yarns that they produce. I used their um, Viola yarn for my Sophie cardigan, my Jennifer Wood Sophie cardigan, which is still a favorite of mine. I absolutely love it. And um, I was in the market for some yarn for some accessories. And basically, 
we are taking Rolly, um, lovely Rolly the pug, on two walks a day at the moment. It's good for us, it's good for him, it's lovely to get out of the house and, and get active, even if it is just um, a half hour walk at a time. And so I have really, really wanted to have some nice knitted accessories to wear whilst we're out walking Rolly. In particular, a nice warm hat and a pair of mittens. My hands and my head uh, were places that I was in need of some woolly goodness. And I um, looked kind of through my Ravelry library and found two gorgeous patterns that I wanted to use for said hat and mittens. And the hat is actually called the Iced Hat. And it was a gift from one of my lovely, lovely viewers, Pam. So hi, Pam. It was a gift that she sent me um, for my birthday. And I love it. It's cabled and gorgeous and amazing. And I happened to notice that it actually matches very, very well to another pattern that I had in my library, which is the August Mittens from The Year of Mittens by Kelburn Woolens. And the actual pattern itself is by... Um, Kate Gagnon Osborne, I hope I've pronounced that right. And again, it's a cabled pattern, which is very similar to the pattern that is on the iced hat. And I thought these would look really, really nice together in a similar kind of color, until I noticed that the hat is knit in a DK weight yarn and the mittens are knit in fingering weight. And that really threw me because I had kind of imagined how perfect this would be with these hat and there's mittens and the same yarn. It would be a lovely set and it'd be great. And then they were different weights and that made me cross because I wanted them to be the same. And then I remembered that John Arben in their Knit by Numbers range has both a four ply and a DK weight yarn and they come in all of the same colours. So my mind was made up and I made a cheeky little order which arrived super, super quickly. The colour that I purchased was colour 74. It's burgundy! <laughs> so I have both the four ply and the DK weight yarns. This is 100% merino. It's so soft and beautiful and I can tell when I hold these next to each other that the colour is slightly different. I think it's even coming across as even more different on the camera, which is odd because they don't look that different in real life. Just because obviously one of them's been dyed on a DK and one of them's been dyed on a four ply, but they are, gosh, they do look different here. <laughs> they don't look that different in real life. They look pretty much identical. But um, there's going to be quite a distance between the top of my head and my hands. So even though there's a slight difference, I don't think it will really um, come across in the in when I'm wearing them. I think they'll look very much the same. So I am really, really excited to be able to have some lovely knitted accessories to wear when I'm out walking Rolly. I'm going to be super toasty warm. And as always, I'm just so happy with these as a product. I love John Arben. I think their customer service is amazing. And um, yeah, definitely invest in some of them. Very reasonably priced as well for what they are. And um, super happy, gonna have hat and mittens. Goodness knows when, but hopefully soon <laughs> because I need them. The next purchase that I made was entirely sewing based. <laughs> and it's actually a new store that I ordered through. Um, it's both a bricks and mortar store and an online store. Um, but the bricks and mortar store I believe is in Birmingham. But it is a store called, and again, I really hope I pronounce this properly, but it's um, Guthrie and Garney, owned by a lovely lady, Lauren, who I know from the Great British Sewing Bee. I saw her on that programme. I don't know her personally, just from watching her on this programme. And since then, she has opened up this beautiful fabric shop and haberdashery, and they stock all manner of gorgeous things. I really hope that one day I get to go to the um, shop in person, uh, because it just looks utterly dreamy and it would be it would be worth a trip to pay a visit there but she stocks a really really lovely variety of fabrics and also some great patterns by all kinds of different indie designers not just you know the big four and I noticed that she had um, a particular product in stock that I had seen 
floating around Instagram but I hadn't yet seen it being stocked anywhere in the UK and I knew that I'd wanted one as soon as I saw it and when I saw that she was stocking them I thought this is about time that I make a purchase from her and that was the sewing planner and this is a, um, a new product from Colette and they are a pattern designer and I must admit I'm really impressed with Colette sewing. I think that the type of things that they've been bringing out recently are fantastic. They are stocking these planners, they've also started doing enamel pins, they're just doing some really cool interesting stuff and yeah I'm really impressed with them. I am a fan of their patterns anyway but this sewing planner is pretty much everything I have wanted for such a long time. The idea is that you use it as a kind of sewing diary to document exactly what you want to work on. You can also, um, I've, I've hardly filled this out at all, but you have sections to do with your style and um, different favorites, so different um, kind of shapes and that type of thing and it's divided into both spring and summer and then fall or as we like to call it here autumn and winter so that you can um, write down what your goals are for the season so what type of things you want to work on and then obviously document all of your projects and the only thing that I have written in here at the moment is in the fall winter project section which is towards the back I have started with just one project and um, I'm going to show you that in just a second because I want to talk about this particular product um, project rather in so what but I haven't used it very much but so far I'm a bit obsessed with it. I want to take it around with me all the time. I'm getting really excited about writing everything up. I will be making a couple of changes to the way that things are written because it doesn't have kind of like um, a when you started a project date and when you finish it in the same way that things when you add them on Ravelry do and that's something that I would like just so that I can um, have a record of when I start a project and that type of thing. So I will be adding that and I'm also going to probably pop a photograph in when I finished each project just so that I have again a record of things that I've made. I thought that would be really nice but I would be really happy to buy a new one of these every year and fill it with all of my sewing projects because I think it's beautiful. It has a lot of space for projects so you don't have to be stingy um, but yeah I'll show you a little bit more of that just later when I talk about my um, so what and what I am planning on sewing um, in the near future. But of course if you're buying from a lovely fabric store, haberdashery and you want to bought by one thing and you have to pay a certain amount of postage you think well why not just slip a couple of extra things in with that order because then you know you would want to buy those things anyway right <laughs> so I did buy a couple of patterns as well first up was a pattern that I have talked about quite a lot previously um, on the podcast because I thought it was amazing it's a new Tilly and the Buttons pattern and it's the Rosa shirt dress so I mean you can sew it up either as a shirt or as a shirt dress I love it I think it is beautiful I'm a huge fan of Tilly and the Buttons which you probably know if you've watched my podcast before because I just think she's she's wonderful, Tilly is wonderful, but I have yet to meet a Tilly and the Buttons pattern that I don't love. And she's brought out a new one recently called Cleo, which is a pinafore dress, and I really wish I'd ordered that one as well, but it wasn't out when I made this order. <laughs> but I am very much interested in making some of these shirt dresses for the winter. I think that would be a really lovely staple that I would live in all the time and in particular I'm really feeling one of these in tartan. Tartan or kind of plaid fabric I think would be beautiful because it would kind of be a more feminine take on just your new, your usual kind of plaid shirt that a lot of people wear around autumn winter so I'm very very happy with this and it's going to be um, a definite must do for my autumn winter wardrobe. And the next pattern that I purchased is actually fueled by the fact that I am really, really in desperate need of some coats and jackets for winter. I noticed that they were stocking a trench coat pattern by Sewaholic. It's called Robson and I am in love with it. It is beautiful. The thing that I love about this is that it has incredible detailing. So around the back you have this little kind of 
detailing here. It has these beautiful kind of shoulder bits. And I just think this would be a really, really nice lighter coat to wear um, in autumn, winter, kind of layered over things because layering is is such a nice thing to be able to do when it gets cold because it means that you can wear big thick jumpers and scarves and you know tights and boots and socks without really overheating and I thought having a coat not necessarily in a wool but in a lighter fabric would be a really really lovely thing to have and I'm a big fan of the trench coat in general it kind of reminds me of that old school sophisticated 1950s look so I'm really really happy with this pattern this is definitely not a number one priority in terms of coats I'm happy to have it and I do want to, to sew one up relatively soon but I do have a couple of other kind of coat projects that are much more a priority for me but that's everything that I purchased. I feel very, very lucky and spoiled. I have spoiled myself a little bit. And I think, again, it's partially because of the slightly downer that I felt over the past week. I do tend to um, indulge myself slightly more when I'm sad. I think it's probably um, a problem that a lot of people face, but I know that all of these things are going to be um, used and hopefully used soon if I can start managing my time so that I do feel that I have more time to get sewing done, to get knitting done. I am focusing on making a little bit more time for myself and my projects and my making, and I know that that's just gonna be really, really lovely. So a little off topic, but it brings us to so what my sewing segment and as I've kind of hinted I don't actually have anything solid to share with you because what I want to talk about is the project that's literally waiting with bated breath to be started and it's a project that I've wanted to work on for a while I've had this pattern in my in my stash I believe for about a year I think I ordered this a year ago and it's a pattern by Grainline Studio and it is the Cascade Duffel Coat, isn't it beautiful? Oh my goodness. And it comes in this um, long length. This is view B. And it also comes in this adorable cropped length. This one has a collar and this one has a hood. And the one that I'm going to be working on is view B, exactly as it is here with the hood, um, with the longer length. And again, this is very much for me when I'm taking Rolly for walks. It's a much more practical coat than any coat that I've had in quite some time, but I still think it's going to look really, really beautiful and stylish and gorgeous. And I also fully intend to wear it with my hat and my mittens, which I'm hopefully going to be knitting up soon. Not that I'm putting any pressure on myself. But now I can show you the first page in my sewing planner, which is including the details of the Cascade Duffel Coat. So here is the project page. As you can see, I've put the name down there, I've written some details about it, and I've also popped in some fabric swatches. I'm gonna show you the fabric properly in a second. In terms of the sketch page, I've pretty much done an identical sketch as to the pattern, just popped it on a person. So it's gonna be kind of just above the knee, um, a relatively long-ish coat. Um, with the hood really really happy and how cute does that look how nice is that layout I am going to add more details to this as I go um, on some more notes and that type of thing but now that it's in the book it means that it needs to be worked on um, very very quickly I believe I've showed this fabric um, on the podcast before so forgive me and indulge me because I am going to show it to you again and also for the first time for those of you who are not long-term viewers of my podcast. This fabric is a fabric that I've had in my stash probably for about six years now. I purchased this when I was still working in theatre in London when I was doing a um, show um, in in Soho in the middle of the West End and it, I was very very close to the Fabric District which is um, pretty much just behind um, Shaftesbury Avenue in London. I was within walking distance of some incredible fabric shops and I purchased this fabric with the intention of making a kind of 1950s suit. So a jacket and a skirt and I, I was 
fully up for making that outfit. I knew that that was what I was going to use this for and for whatever reason it never ended up happening and I am really really happy that it didn't because to be honest I don't think I would be interested in wearing that now but a duffel coat out of the same wool fabric is going to be a dream. This is Harris Tweed in this incredible tealy blue. I've never seen Harris Tweed in this colour um, and it's really special. I love it so much. It's a really beautiful jewel tone and excitingly it goes really really well with burgundy. <laughs> this is kind of my favourite colour combination. Um, a kind of tealy blue and a very deep red and I think it looks beautiful. So I know that wearing this duffel coat with those accessories that I want to knit up is going to be really nice. I also think it's quite flattering for my particular colouring with red hair. I think this colour looks great. But I have a couple of other fabrics that are going to be going with this. For the main lining, I bought this online. It's a it's a kind of minty green. It's getting blown out a little bit on this camera. It's, it's more intense a colour than it is. Um, showing up here in real life but that's going to be the majority of the lining for this so particularly in inside the sleeves and inside the back of the coat but as a little kind of pop of something interesting I wanted to go for something a little bit different for the inside of the hood and also down the front panels of the coat um, when I was lining it so I picked up this beautiful plaid and this is the softest cotton in the world. I think it was advertised online, I did buy this from a website, I think it may have been from fabric.com or something like that, but I did buy it as a flannel, it specified that it was a flannel but I don't think it's a flannel, it's quite it's a, quite a lot thinner than the majority of flannels that I have seen or worked with in the past but I would call it a brushed cotton. It is so soft and beautiful and I think it looks really cute with the teal. So this will be going, like I said, inside the hood and also down the front lining of the coat so that I have a little pop of beautiful red plaid going on there. And I am so excited to have this coat and to have these accessories to go with it because look at how gorgeous and and jewel toned and luxurious this looks. I I just, it makes me happy. Having all of these things and knowing that they're going to make, be made into some, some beautiful things that are gonna work well together, make me, it makes me so happy. It's again, me focusing on the idea of a cohesive wardrobe, of making things that will work well together. And I just feel that I'm getting so much better at that. And I have such a better idea of what it is that I want out of my clothes, so very very happy and excited to get this started. I'm hopeful that I will at least get um, the cutting out of this done um, over this coming week. If I can start construction as well then that would be amazing but it's been a long time since I've done something very heavily constructed in terms of outerwear and it's one of my great loves, along with kind of fully boned, beautiful dresses, um, <laughs> tailoring and working with wool. <sighs> it just makes me so happy. So I can't wait to do this and to wear it and enjoy it and share the whole process with you guys. So we're coming up to the last section of the podcast this week, you guys. And it is, of course, as always, General Waffle. General Waffle. And for those of you who don't know, General Waffle is basically the part of the podcast where I can waffle on about whatever I want, be it about sewing or knitting or anything like that. Um, it can be completely off topic and random and it has been known to be in the past. But this week, because it's been a difficult week, personally for a lot of people across the world, politically, it feels like things are hard for a lot of people. I wanted to spend my general waffle this week saying thank you. I feel incredibly lucky that even in the darkest points of my life, in the darkest points of the world as it were, um, we have a group of people here within this community that look after each other, that respect each other, that support each other and love each other and it feels sometimes that that's getting increasingly rare. 
and I just want to say I appreciate you so much. This week actually marked the one year anniversary of me starting this channel, um, which is really bizarre because that's flown by. Technically it's not the one year anniversary of the podcast because the first ever video that I uploaded on this channel, which you can look back and see if you want to, is actually a fabric haul, which I included the fabric that I talked about in my so what section, funnily enough. Um, and it's very different to how I do things now. It's it's a little bit nervous, a little bit shaky. And um, I was really talking to nobody because I didn't have you guys then. But this last year has been one of the best years of my life in terms of my own personal development and my creativity. And I have you to thank for that because without you, I would still just be sitting in a room by myself talking to nobody. I appreciate you all so much. A lot of you thank me on Ravelry and Instagram and um, all over because of the time that I put into this podcast and that is wonderful. I appreciate that so much. It's lovely to hear that you love what I do and that you enjoy sitting with me and having a little chat but I do it because I love it. To be honest the real thanks goes to you guys for being here and making this what it is because you are, without you it really would just be nothing. <laughs> I think that there's gonna be some exciting changes up ahead um, in terms of new um, content for the podcast, for the channel, in terms of new things that I have in the pipeline that I'm really excited about, more excited than I have been in a very long time about a lot of things and I have you to thank for that. So. Thank you so much for being there for me, for being there for each other, for being there for this whole community. You are incredible. All of us together have created something pretty darn special. And for all the darkness and all of the bleakness that there may be in the world, we have something amazing. And we need to bring that into the whole world as I've said before, I think if more people in real life behave the way that we do in this community, we'd have a much nicer place to live. So just don't stop being who you are and doing what you're doing because you're awesome. And I'm going to stop before I get emotional because I'm an emotional person and I have been known to shed a tear on the podcast before. So let's just stop before that happens. That is everything we have time for this week, you guys. Thank you so much for coming and spending some time with me. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please like the video. Hit subscribe down below if you want to be kept up to date as to when I have new videos. There will be some fun and interesting content coming between episodes over the next couple of weeks. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I am sorry that this week feels a little bit all over the place. Hopefully we'll be back to business as usual from next week with more structure and a little bit more actual crafty content as it feels that all I've really done this week is talk to you but I know you'll forgive me <laughs> thank you so much for watching I'm sending you all my love happy sewing happy knitting and I'll see you all again soon bye Thank um.